Hello and welcome back to another Classic WoW video. Today we are taking a look at Sulgurum from a mage point of view, and how you can maximize your gold per hour from farming in here. From my experience it is best to do this duo for a couple of reasons I'll cover later in this video. There are four different things we'll cover in this video, and only the first is mage specific. The rest is for every single class. In this video we'll cover how to AoE farm crocodiles, where they're located, how to pull them, and what to do if it goes wrong, how to solo farm the blood scythe for yourself or to sell to others, how to solo farm the class specific voodoo dolls, and how to solo farm blood vines. First we'll cover how to avoid mobs to get yourself to where you want to go. Simply just swim in the water on the right side, and once you get to the waterfall just go up this hill and watch for patrols before you jump down. There are two patrols you want to avoid, one pack of cobras patrolling in between the start of the raid and down to the bridge, and a couple of trolls patrolling over the bridge. If you do jump down and you happen to have bad timing so you face the patrols at the bridge, do not panic as there is a reset spot right next to the bridge, but you can also just hug the wall at this pillar and avoid the patrol completely. Just hug the opposite side of the wall and you're good. Then when you go over the bridge, you have the first set of crocodiles. I'm not gonna bore you with the entire commentary of what happens during the pulls, but basically we have one frost spec mage and one arcane spec mage. The frost mage's job is to always keep the mobs slowed with blizzard, while the arcane mage does insane DPS. You want to alternate frost novas whenever you can. Alternatively, you can have two frost mages and blizzard the enemies down together, or kind of call them down. The reason we went with one arcane mage is because he is specced for raids and didn't want to respec. But honestly, this works out very well because the frost mage literally just has to keep up blizzard behind the other mage and it's very chill. After the first pack is cleared, you jump across the water to the second pack of crocodiles, where you do the same thing again and kill them. It is possible to combine packs 1 and 2, but we choose not to do that just yet. Once you get this down, you have 4 more packs, but you'll do them in 2 pulls, so 2 pulls of 2 packs each. There's roughly 8 crocodiles in each pull. Before you start this next pull, you'll want to wait for the Soul Flare and Sons of a Car to patrol around and then walk behind them to voice the crocodiles. Beware of your positioning, so you don't pull the Berserkers on the left, nor the crocodiles underneath you. This might require some practice, and I died a couple of times practicing this. Once you reach the furthest away crocodiles, you'll want to pull one of them with your wand, and then run back. Once again, beware of the berserkers. When you're a bit further down the ledge and away from the crocodiles beneath you, jump down. Don't jump down too early, because you'll pull the closest crocodile, but also don't wait too long, because the crocodiles you pulled with the wand will reset. If you do happen to pull the closest crocodile by jumping too early, do not panic, as you can frost novite and then ice block pull, where you would normally kill the crocodiles. Basically, just ice block wherever you want and have the other mage blister the mobs off you, then you frost over them when you're out of ice block. Once again, the pull itself is the difficult part, so once you know how to finish the mobs, that's pretty straightforward, so I'm just going to fast forward to the next and final crocodile spot. Over here you'll want to wand the pack on the right and bring it to the pack on the left or vice versa and then ice block. And because the other mage here is arcane I have to blink towards him and then frost nova the enemies ASAP since his blizzard doesn't slow them at all. This pull is the most difficult one if you ask me because there are some hills where the mobs can resist your attacks and if you go up the hill your arcone of cold can miss some enemies and so on. So we try to avoid going up the hill. You can probably mix and match these crocodile locations as you want, and I would imagine you can actually combine the first four locations by having two mages pull separate sides and meeting in the middle, but we found it safest to do it this way. You also have some tigers and panthers across the raid which you can pull as well if you're looking for more coins and more bijus. Next up we have a farm that works very well for every class and all you need is a way to pull mobs from ranged. This farm is good because you can first of all obtain your own blood scythe from these piles, and you can obtain voodoo dolls which are needed for the set G class quest. And once you have obtained your own blood scythe, if you find another one, you can sell it to other people who still need their blood scythe as well. If you see another blood scythe drop, just leave it and start posting that you're selling it. When another player opens that pile, the blood scythe will still be in it as long as you didn't reset the instance. The method we're using here is pulling the mobs with a ranged attack, then going up the stairs again and jumping down to the middle level. On this middle level, mobs will start to avoid and stare at you and eventually reset. 
The second they drop combat with you, or the second they start running back, you'll want to jump down and loot that pile. If timed correctly, you will have enough time to finish looting. There are three different pile locations, one west, one north, and one east of this temple. On the north spot, you can also get a herb spawn right next to the pile, and if you time it correctly, you can actually loot both the herb and the pile because the mobs have to run a longer way around the temple. Oh yeah, before you start doing this, you will also want to strip naked so you don't get a huge repair bill, unless you're a rogue, in which case you can vanish after looting. If you're two people, you can take turns having one person pull and the other person loot, and if you time this correctly, you can both survive and loot everything around the temple without having to die. If the guy pulling is a mage, you also have an advantage because he can blister the enemies at the stairs, giving the looter more time before they reset. Also, the looter isn't in combat, so he can mount up on the way back to the safe spot. This is a very great farm as you can obtain quite the gold per hour, and it's doable by every class. However, some classes are better than others, like rogues and mages. Your gold per hour will consist of punctured voodoo dolls, blood vines, random herbs, and selling additional blood signs to people while farming. Selling blood signs is however only lucrative for a short amount of time, and it will provide some extra downtime to the farm itself, as you will have to look for a buyer, wait for him to get to Sulgurub, then guide him on how to get to the spot. However, once you get the route down, it's a very chill farm, as you just run in, loot a herb, maybe get a blood vine, die and repeat. While I was doing this with Crocolisks, we looted up here every run, since we had some time to kill in between each reset. And if you do it solo, you can loot some additional herb nodes around the entrance as well. By only looting the herb nodes up at the temple and doing 5 resets per hour, I was able to get 5 blood vines in the first hour, and 4 blood vines in the next hour. I only did a 2 hour test so far, but I'll keep doing this over the next few days, so I'll update you on my Discord server if it was all RNG, and if there's more or less blood vines over a longer testing period. So there it is, a quick video showing you the gold mine of Sulgurub. Hopefully this video was helpful to you, and hopefully it will help you make some gold. I will say right away that this method will only be effective for a certain amount of time, and if you're watching this a week from now, it will be far less effective than it was when this video was uploaded. The price of Sulgurub coins and bijus have already gone down a lot in less than 24 hours after the raid's release, and Bloodvine have already gone down to 50 gold each on my server, and I would imagine it will go down even further as well. That being said, it will stabilize at one point, and it will always be an okay gold farm to do, and by farming at the temple for blood vines, you have a really chill instance gold farm available to all classes just in case you want to make some gold. I would also like to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, which is my Patreon. VIP level patrons can see their names on the screen right now in the credits, and none of this would be possible without you. With the current ad rates on YouTube, the only way I'm able to pay rent and eat food is literally through Patreon, so thank you so much for the massive support. I do also have another video coming up tomorrow, which is my Phase 6 Investments video, and if you want access to Phase 6 Investments or TBC Investments, before those videos become public, you can find that info on my Patreon, which is linked in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.